Nibbers float from RW are the ideal float for when you're fishing right up in the upper layers and catching a lot of fish during the summer months. The design primarily is a shallow float and basically they're just a nice little short pattern like you see, they're probably only a couple of inches long, which is really important when you're fishing up in the water. You want a nice dinky float that allows you to fish nice and shallow if needs be. They've also got a nice thin top, but still a nice visible top. It's very important that this top isn't too thick on the dibbers as it just gives a little bit too much resistance to the F1s or I'd smaller fish like that that are taking your bait. So just a nice thick top that you can see, but not too thick that it's too buoyant. And then it's just got a carbon stem, which just makes the float nice and light. So when you're slapping it over, you're not getting too much of a big splash, but it also allows it to follow your bait through the water. If you're fishing a little bit on the drop and it just makes it a perfect float for fishing for F1s and hide and fish like that. So like I say, uses for this float, fishing shallow, anything less than 18 inches deep. This is absolutely perfect for that. It's not a float that I'd use above 18 inches deep. There's other floats in the range that we'll talk about that works better for that. But whenever you're fishing really shallow, right in them upper layers, this is the perfect float for that. Now, it comes in three sizes, which basically is to do with sort of the venues what you're fishing when you're on smaller venues snake lake type venues the little dinky ones are better but there is also some slightly heavier ones in the range so there's a number one which is the small one and then the number two and the number three and as it goes up they just take a little bit extra shot for when you're fishing on bigger venues or maybe if you're fishing with baits like pellets and stuff like that just to help them support them bigger baits so that is the rw dibbers float Shotting patterns for the dibbers float needs to be kept really, really simple. There's no point messing about with fancy shotting patterns or strung out shotting patterns when you're using this float because you're normally going to be fishing for a lot of fish and fishing less than 18 inches deep. The first one that I want to talk about is the number two, which I think is the most versatile float in the range and it's the one that I probably use the most often. Basically, it just takes two number 10s, so it's a nice light float. So if I just move down to the shotting pattern now, I've just got them, two number 10 stots, which I prefer stots for this because I'm just gonna bulk them down above the hook length. So it just makes a nice little neat bulk at the bottom of your rig. Two number 10s above a two or a three inch hook length, depending on how deep I'm fishing. Normally, if I'm fishing more, less than 12 inches deep, I tend to prefer a little two inch hook length or sort of 12 to 18 inch, three inch hook length just balances it a little bit nicer. So. Nice little short hook length, couple little shot, it means it's nice and positive, so when the fish takes the bait, they tend to hook themselves, or you get a nice quick indication from the fish. Really, really important. Now, like I say, this number two is the most versatile one, so when I'm fishing on snake lakes, and I'm fishing sort of down the middle, and I'm feeding with maggots and casters, this is the one I tend to go for most of the time. But we do have two other floats in the range, and they're both very important for slightly different applications, so I'm going to touch on them now. So I'm going to move on to the number one, which is the lightest float in the range. And you can use this float for fishing conventionally, and they take just two number 11s. So I'd shot them exactly the same as the number two, but instead of two number 10s, it'd just be two number 11s above a two or a three inch hook length. But personally, I don't use these floats for conventional shotting patterns. I just tend to use this for the overshotted rig. Now I believe these are the perfect float for the overshotted rig. Being a dibber, they don't tangle up when you're catching a lot of fish, but they just take that nice amount of shot that I don't have to put too much shot down the line. With the overshotted rig, if you have a real heavy float to begin with, you have to put too much shot down the line to get it to sink, and then the float sinks too quick and it's not as effective. So these floats are the ones to go for. And basically, if I move down to the shotting pattern, I've just got five number 10 stots there in a bulk. I always use a slightly longer hook length as well with this rig, normally a four or five inch hook length. And all that creates is just a little bit more movement as you're lifting and dropping the rig. And because you've got a direct line, you don't have to worry about seeing the indications, the fish are gonna hook themselves. So elongating the hook length on this rig is really, really effective. Now, five number 10s in the bulk is something I've worked out to be about perfect in mo most occasions. Now. When you get a real calm day, you can sometimes take one number 10 off and use four number 10s, and that just slowly sinks the float. So when you're lifting and dropping, it just slows the hook bait down. But I find whenever there's a little bit of wind, which there usually is on these sorts of venues, 
it's not as effective so five number tens would be what i'd go for 99 percent of the time when i'm fishing for the overshotted rig so that's the number one good float for fishing really shallow and conventional but more so for fishing overshotted now the final float in the range is the number three which has just got a slightly thicker tip and a slightly bigger body on it which just allows you to fish with bigger baits so four mil pellets six mil pellets or if i'm wanting to fish on an open water venue i go to lindome lakes a lot and that catches the wind really bad so even when i'm fishing with maggots and casters on there i tend to go for this float as it just holds that little bit better a little bit more weight down the line just takes three number tens again above a two or a three inch hook length now it's only one extra number 10 than a number two float, but what it also does is take three number 10s plus a pellet, which is really, really important. That little bit of extra weight just keeps that rig fishing a little bit nicer. It doesn't drift about as bad in the wind, and it just fishes really well, this little float, for when you're fishing in open water on F1 venues. So nice, simple shotting pattern on all three, just the bulk, but it's really important. You have all three in your armory, and it's a brilliant little float, this one that I use all the time, the RW Dibber.